Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Quiet Bay. It's an 8x10, and I did it uh, about a week or so ago. And uh, just a real quick over overview of what we're doing here. We're painting on hardboard using oil paint. Uh, I'm doing my underpainting first. That's uh, some uh, burn rubber mixed with perylene. And uh, yeah, I really am very, very happy with the way this painting uh, turned out. And I think you will really enjoy watch me put it together but while we watch the painting coming together I thought I would get into um, some uh, a topic that I've been thinking about a bit lately and that is um, your interior dialogue as you're painting now if you've been following the channel for any length of time you'll know that uh, I've characterized the um, part of the process that occurs as you're painting as having an interior cheerleader and an interior editor editor you really need both to to be uh, doing good work the interior cheer, cheerleader is he's or she excuse me he they are saying stuff like you're doing it it's looking great this is really working i'm really getting somewhere okay that kind of thing oh it's coming together oh that looks good <laughs> I can go on. You really need that voice. But if that's all you've got, uh, you're going to need to uh, maybe adjust what you're doing because the other voice says, wait a minute, is that really working? Does the eye go there properly? Is that color appropriate here? Is there too much of it? Should I be modulating right now? Um, should I really change the shape of this tree a little bit? Um, is, is this going too high off the board or should it come down? It's endless. It's almost endless. And um, if that voice is, is too prominent, you'll become immobilized. You won't be able to function or work at all. So it needs to be a real balance there. And I encourage you to support both of those interior voices um, and have that balance. If the editor gets to whatever, um, just shut that down. You know, you don't need to go. Uh, this is the other thing. You don't need to um, uh, let perfectionism. Uh, what will happen if you, if you overindulge in perfectionist thinking is you'll also become immobilized because... Uh, I can't think of a perfect painting I've ever done. I can look at any one of them and think, mm -hmm, ah, oh, and that's been my entire art career. Uh, and I was a professional artist. I still am a professional fine artist now, but I was a professional commercial artist for 13 years and, uh, you know, getting paid, you know. Um, so there too, you know, having self-belief is important. You've got to believe what you're doing is good and valid. Um, but if that goes too far out, then you're going to start uh, having blind spots. Uh, and as it stands, you're going to have blind spots anyway, because that's just the nature of our human vision, our human um, uh, perception. Uh, you know, you're going to have limitations. It doesn't really matter how smart you are, talented you are, or um, uh, how hard you work even. You know, I will, I will say though on that, um, the working hard thing, that is really the one thing that you can do to improve your work. You can, yes, you can strike a good balance between these two interior voices. That's very important. Um, and especially, uh, you want to avoid too much, uh, too much negative input and, um, especially want to avoid comparing your work to the work of others. Uh, oh, we got the ad for the book coming up. I got several orders this last week, which is absolutely great. And I'm going to be uh, shipping those out post-haste. Um, all these tips, you know, things like this, they're in the book. And um, uh, and more, lots more, really. Uh, I tried to put everything I knew about painting in that book. And then I backed it up with like 10 solid demos, you know. And you would think, eh, with the video age, do we really need demos? And I thought, well, no, I want this to be something that will stand on its own um, for year after year, even if the Internet's not working. So get that book, 60 bucks, international shipping's included. That ain't cheap, but, you know, I want to make it easy for you to get it. So go ahead.
Okay, back into what we're talking about, and this was, uh, let's see if I can get, I, I, I distracted myself a little bit, but um, the experience thing, you know, oh, Mike, you're always harping on that. Well, okay, this is why. Um, when you do something enough, um, then, then you have some mastery of it. You don't have to think about it and work over it again and again and again okay it was a perfect example of say driving a car when you first start driving you know you've got to take your foot off the brake and put it on the gas and make sure you're steering steering the car and make sure you're looking out the window you're not hitting people you're not going too fast or too slow um etc so on and so forth and it can be exhausting when you're a new driver because there's so many things that you have to pay attention to um, and it's life or death uh, to, as well. I mean, you screw up, you could go off the side of a cliff and just become a statistic. So, now painting doesn't work that way, but uh, how do you know where to put a stroke? How do you know when to modulate a color? How do you know uh, when something's too dark or too light in the context of the uh, composition? You know, how do you know these things? Um, you only know them, uh, ba most of it, uh, you would know because you've done it a lot and so you don't have to worry about it. a lot of it becomes automatic um, where the conscious mind does come in at times and says this that and that's the, that's the editor and the editor is like on your side just like a book editor would be you know oh, you're going to polish up your text you're going to make it move quicker and be the very best thing it can be and that's really another point you know whatever it is that you're painting you know the seeds are sown from the idea from the uh, re either reference photo or maybe it's a study after someone else's work or maybe it's a pure work of imagination or maybe it's based on the drawing or or wherever it comes from it starts there and the seeds are there you know really if if the seeds aren't uh, in in proper alignment proper order um, that is the single greatest limiting factor to the greatness of your piece so that's one reason I'm real big on underpaintings because um, although you know I have a reference photo and I can tell you the the principles definitely in effect there's only so good a painting you can make from that reference photo uh, and uh, to the degree that you understand that um, you may be more or less free of the reference photo you might uh, you know after you've had a lot of experience you'll know what doesn't work in paintings and so if there those elements are in your reference photo you're going to ignore them you won't paint them whereas when you're starting out how would you know you know you can maybe remember a video where I said oh, don't do this don't do that uh, whatever um, I don't tend to do a lot of that because every situation's unique. You can't really. Um, I, I do have my favorite compositions. Like you, you look at the one we're doing now. It's a, kind of a bit of a, what's called a seesaw. Uh, we have the main tree, the subject, but balanced out is that little little mass of trees in the distance. If that wasn't there, it wouldn't be as balanced. It, it might still work, but you know I maybe would have to do some other things but uh, it's natural for me to do that because I know I need to balance things out and like a seesaw you could have a little guy on on one end and a big guy on the other that's a very typical form of uh, composition actually it's in my book check it out uh, anyway I kind of want to talk about that and so uh, we just got like one minute left so um, the last thing I want to say is that you know be your biggest supporter at the end of the day if you're going to make an error um, err on the side of being a cheerleader have have a positive attitude about your work believe that you are improving that you are getting better that you are learning and that you can do it and that um, the piece you're working on could be your best work yet you know have that attitude make that front and center don't believe negative things about yourself or your work um, and if you have people in your environment that aren't encouraging you um, don't don't hang out with them or don't make them a part of your art life you know and I think that's really critical you have need to have a positive framework realizing that you're maybe not the best that ever was but that you have something special to offer and then you're gonna develop that and you're gonna make 
the best effort that you can. Anyway, until I come back with another video for your edification, hopefully for your edification and enjoyment and education, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family.